Welcome to our Sailrite Workbench. This is the second video in a series we're calling Learning to Sew. So whether you're new to sewing or you need a refresher, this is the perfect place for you. In today's video, we're gonna be showing you how to start sewing on your machine. We're gonna be showing you these steps on the Ultrafeed LSC, but you can apply these basic principles to any machine. Now, before we get into the actual sewing, I think it's important to understand how a stitch is created on your machine. So a stitch is made with two threads, the top thread and the bottom thread, which is held on a bobbin. We talked about bobbins and how to install them in part one. So if you want a refresher on bobbins, feel free to check out part one again. When the needle goes through the material, the gib hook under the feed dog swings forward and grabs the upper thread and wraps it around the bobbin thread to create a loop. The take up arm goes down when the gib hook takes the top thread so that the tension is released to form the loop. Once the loop is formed, the take up arm rises back up to tighten the loop, which forms the stitch. That's the basic mechanics of how a machine sets a stitch. So with that information, we can go ahead and start sewing. To get started sewing, we're gonna be using two layers of canvas, which are pretty thin to test our stitch tension. So using two layers of whatever fabric that you're gonna be using to sew is a good amount to test your stitch tension with. So we've already installed a needle and we've already threaded our machine, but make sure that you have the appropriate thread and needle for your fabric type. So we're gonna start by raising our presser foot, placing the fabric underneath and lowering it. And we're also gonna go ahead and turn our machine on. Now, before you start sewing, it's important to decide what stitch length and stitch type you'd like. We're gonna be using a four millimeter stitch length and a straight stitch. Now, an important tip as you start sewing when you make your first few stitches is to hold the loose thread ends back so that you don't end up with a mess of tangled thread at the beginning of your stitch. So we're gonna hold these threads back and slowly press down our pedal to sew a few stitches. Once you've sewn a few stitches, you can let go of the loose thread ends. Now we're gonna sew a line of stitches to see our stitch tension. Once you have your line sewn, pull the fabric out and check both sides of the stitches. An important tip for taking your fabric out of the machine is two things. First of all, make sure that your needle is not buried in the fabric or you won't be able to get your fabric out. Also, make sure that this take-up arm is at its highest position. So if you don't have your take-up arm at the highest position, the machine is still in the process of creating a stitch, which kind of creates a trap thread. But now if you have the take-up arm at its highest position and you lift the foot up, the thread will easily be released. Now to check stitch tension. You want the knot of the stitch to be hidden in the middle of the fabric. So as you can see here, you can't see the knot on the top of our stitch, but on the bottom side, you can see the knot coming out. So this means that our stitch tension is too loose and we're gonna need to tighten it. So we're gonna place our fabric back under the machine, lower our presser foot, and we are going to tighten our stitch tension knob by one full rotation. Then we're gonna hold our loose thread ends back like so and sew another line of stitches. Once we get to the end, we're gonna make sure that our take-up arm is at its highest position and then we can take the fabric out. So let's check our stitch tension again. It's good on the top. And it looks like this knot is buried on the bottom side as well. So our stitch tension is good. So follow this process on your machine until you can't see the knot on the top or bottom of your stitches. To make bigger stitch tension adjustments, rotate the stitch tension knob in full rotations. And for more fine-tuned adjustments, you can rotate the knob in half or quarter rotations. If the thread you are using is too large for the fabric being sewn, then the loop will never be fully buried in the two layers because the loop thread is thicker than the fabric. So if you're experiencing this, check that you're using the correct thread with your fabric. So now that we've set our stitch tension, it's time to start practicing some basic sewing. So we got another piece of scrap fabric and we're gonna place it under the foot, lower the presser foot, and then we're gonna hold our thread ends back. Now, if you were to continue sewing from here, the end of your stitches would be loose and they could start to unravel. So to prevent that, you wanna back stitch over these stitches to lock them into place. So to do that, we're gonna hold down our reverse lever and sew over the first few stitches again. Now that you've sewn back to the beginning point, you can release the lever and sew forward again. 
You're going to want to do this at the beginning and end of every stitch you make to ensure that it's locked into place. So after you backstitch, you can go ahead and sew forward. Because the LSE is a walking foot machine, the machine will feed the fabric for you and all you need to do is guide it. So if you don't have a walking foot machine, you may have to do more work to feed your fabric evenly through the machine. So to keep our stitch straight on this walking foot machine, we're gonna stop stitching and reposition our hands and then continue sewing. So if you move your hands while guiding the fabric, your stitch can be a little off. We're gonna show an example of each. So if I were to sew and I were to just try to move my hands as I do it, your stitch will not be quite as straight. Now, if you were to sew and then stop sewing, reposition your hands where you need it. It's a short piece of fabric, so if you had a longer piece and you're repositioning, you'll stop, reposition, and then continue to sew. And then stop, reposition, and continue to sew. And this is just gonna ensure that you have a straight stitch. When you get to a point where you wanna make a sharp turn, go ahead and stop sewing. We're gonna to wanna to make sure that the needle is buried in the fabric, and since ours isn't, we're gonna go ahead and rotate the balance wheel until the needle is at its lowest point and just starting to come back up. Then we're gonna lift our presser foot and rotate our fabric to whatever degree turn that you wanna make. We're just gonna be making a 90 degree turn here. So once we have it where we want it, we're gonna lower our presser foot, and then we can just continue to keep sewing. So we're gonna show you these steps again. We're gonna rotate our balance wheel until it's at its lowest position, just starting to come up, lift the presser foot and rotate the fabric. Then if we need to reposition, we'll stop, reposition further back and continue sewing. So when you're finished sewing, first we're going to backstitch to lock our stitch into place. Then we're going to make sure that our take-up arm is at its highest position. It looks like we kind of timed it pretty well there. We're going to lift our foot and take the fabric out. With those quick tips, you're ready to start practicing your sewing skills. Now if you're looking for a project to start with, we have plenty of DIY project videos for beginners as well as advanced sewers. Make sure to subscribe to our two YouTube channels, Sailrite Workbench and Sailrite DIY, because you won't want to miss out on hundreds of free video resources. If you've missed part one of this series, we've linked it down in the description below so you can get caught up. We've also linked a playlist that includes all the videos from this series. Thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time for part three of Learning to Sew.